Okay, so in the last class, oh, we studied about what is biosavart slow and how we represent that for a line charge, surface charge, and volume charge. So that is where we finished last class, right? So then if you, if you are checking your uh, syllabus means what comes next is by using this bio Savart slope, how to calculate the magnetic field intensity for a finite and infinite wire carrying that is, uh, that is for a filamentary conductor. So I told you last class filamentary conductor. So for it, that's for a line charge. What will be the magnetic field intensity if it is of, of finite length as well as it is for infinite length, then uh, you, you need to find, find out the same for a circular loop. That is, if the current is going through a circular loop, what will be the magnetic field intensity? And also for a rectangular loop, what is the magnetic field intensity? So these three things actually comprises the first part of your module three. Uh, perhaps we can say it is 25 percentage, 25 percentage of your first module. So all these things are done by using bio Savart slope. Okay. So let's see how to calculate the magnetic field intensity for a wire uh, current carrying wire. So uh, what we are uh, doing is magnetic field intensity due to the finite and infinite wire carrying current. So this actually uh, has a lot of similarities with the electric field intensity derivation we have done in module two. The figure is almost same. So just listen. So you have zero here, and then a point P is considered here, and this is the Z axis. And then Line is here and is like this. It is there. Then alpha one, alpha two is here. Then uh, this uh, the current. This is carrying current I. So what we are doing? We'll we'll consider a small length, small length DL in the current carrying conductor. Small length DL we are taking to the point P. The distance is R. So I think you might be remembering this figure. And this angle is alpha. So most of the things are same here. Only thing difference is that we are calculating it. Okay, this is, this is the z-axis. So this much only is required here. Now, considering the contribution of, consider the contribution of, so this is how the derivation should go. This normally comes for eight marks or 10 marks. Contribution of dh. dh is the differential uh, part of the grade. That's how, that's how we normally do. So dh at p, the electric field intensity at p due to dl at Point P, that's what we are called at P due to DL at 0, 0 Z because it is on, it is along the Z axis and uh, so only Z coordinate is there. Uh, so we are considering the conductor along the Z axis. So X and Y call length DL and because of that small current carrying length DL or IDL, what is, what is the electric field intensity that we are getting at point P? That is what we are calculating here. So according to bio Savart's law, According to bio savart slope, we can write dh is equal to idl cross r by 4 pi r cube, right? That is equation number one. So now uh, we, uh, we, we have written the but, uh, basic equation for bio savart slow that is dh is proportional to ideal cross r by 4 pi r cube so you know whatever it what all these things you already know how 4 pi r cube came and all you know unit vector and all we combined and wrote okay now we can we need to find an expression for dl dl according to so this is in the cartesian coordinates so dl will be d z a z dl will be d z a z because it is along the z axis and a z is a unit vector and now we need to find out the vector r, that is this distance vector r, we need to find out. How we will find out? Vector r is equal to rho a rho minus z a z. Yeah, I forgot to mark one thing. This distance, this horizontal distance is rho. So the vector r, this distance will be rho a rho minus z a z that is the vector r now we can combine now we can do dl cross r so we have dl with us we have r with us then we just need to do dl cross r so this this is actually the same step whether it is a circular conductor or whether it's a rectangular conductor whatever 
conductor we have what we are doing is we'll consider a small length there then we'll con uh, we'll consider the effect that small length have on a particular point p uh, if it, if you are considering a rectangle maybe we will calculate the electric field intensity at the center of the rectangle or like that we will calculate so whatever we are doing first of all we need to find out what is a dl there then uh, we need first of all we need to write bio savart's law then we need to write what is dl that small differential element we are considering then we need to uh, uh, write down the distance of the, that differential element to the point where we are calculating the magnetic field intensity that will be r so those things two things you calculate then you take dl cross r so dl cross r you get it as rho d is set into a phi so what you are doing is uh, same thing uh, uh, a cross b how you are doing uh, that same thing cross product you can take so i am not uh, explaining that now if you are not getting means you getting it that means you just ask me later so directly that is uh, d is at a is at is given and r so both uh, coordinates are given what is a is at a rho a is at so just uh, write down how you can just show you how to go go ahead with that so a rho a phi a z will come then you write the coordinate of the first vector cross product when you do that you get rho d z a phi okay so just try that while you are studying because that will be a good practice so you go so we get what is dl cross r then what is h h will be integral so dh we have ideal cross r by 4 pi r cube then h will be integral of i into dl cross r dl cross r is rho d z into a phi divided by 4 pi r cube we have right 4 pi and what is r uh, we have calculated r here so modulus of r will be root of rho square plus z square square plus z square mod of r is root of rho square plus z square so we can write rho square plus z square the whole raised to 1 by 2 right? square is there then it compares from the figure, uh, we should take some values. So we have Z here. From the from the figure, Z is equal to rho cot alpha. Again, this is angle alpha, this is rho. Then Z will be rho cot alpha. So from the figure, we can take Z is equal to rho cot alpha. Then rho cosec square alpha d alpha. Okay. Then we will substitute these values here. Then H is equal to minus i this minus will come here minus i by 4 pi so this derivation is going to be the in integral limit here all these things we have seen in uh, uh, while uh, uh, deriving for electric electric field density itself so limit will be from alpha 1 to alpha 2 right so limit will be from alpha 1 to alpha this minus i by 4 pi integral alpha 1 to alpha 2 and then you need to substitute for dz rho square Cos square alpha by rho cube cos cube alpha into d alpha into a phi. So you get it like minus i by 4 pi rho into a phi integral alpha. So these th all these things you can ca uh, cancel and finally what you get is alpha 1 to alpha 2 sin alpha into d alpha so uh, now when we continue with the integration uh, you will get it like so now it is very simple minus i by okay this is minus if you are taking it inside then it will be cos alpha 2 minus cos alpha 1 into a phi so this is very important this derivation is very important. So finally, what you are getting is h is equal to i by 4 pi rho into cos alpha 2 minus for a finite conductor. That is the length of the finite length alpha 1 model alpha 2 where it is going along the exact is an axis. The conductor is of infinite length. If the conductor is of infinite length. If the conductor is of infinite length, then the figure will be approximately like, so it will come like this. So that means the length we cannot calculate alpha one. So one, this will be an infinity and 
this will also be in infinity alpha 2 will also be in infinity in that case we can write so if you consider this this as a 0 0 minus infinity i think they have taken this as a this is a and this is b minus infinity and b is at 0 0 infinity in that case i is taken as 190 degree because so you can give a point if you don't know what this point is, is actually going like this so this will go go like this this and alpha 2 this is actually alpha 2 and alpha 2 will be 0 degree so for an infinite infinity, this is alpha 2 is 0 degree in that case h is equal to so uh, alpha 2 and alpha 1 you can substitute here and finally you get h is equal to i by 2 pi rho into a phi so magnetic field intensity is h is equal to i by 2 pi rho into a phi so I'll just uh, once again just revise it. So so far we have studied what is bio Savart's law. So you know what, what is the basic equation. Now by using the ap application, by using bio Savart's law, we are finding what is the electric field intensity due to a finite and infinite wire carrying current. So first of all, we consider a current ca carrying uh, current uh, uh, a, a wire carrying current I along the Z axis. And then uh, we draw, we need to find out uh, the electric uh, the magnetic field intensity at a point P, which is at a distance R. And then um, uh, we took the uh, angle alpha one and alpha two at the, at the two ends of the current carrying conductor, and then we took a small length dl. Then according to Biot-Savart's law, dH is proportional to idl cross R by four by R cube. Then we found out what is dl. Then we found out what is R. Then a DL cross R we did. Then uh, if we found out H, that is integral DH we found out. And then we took Z is equal to rho cot alpha, just like we have done in electric field intensity, that derivation itself. So same concept. Then I think in electric field intensity, it was, there were a bit, uh, two more, bit more steps were there. Is this, this is relatively easy compared to that derivation. Then the same thing, uh, we gave the integration constants, uh, I mean the limits alpha 1 to alpha 2 and then you finally arrived at h is equal to i by 4 pi rho cos alpha 2 minus cos alpha 1 into a5 and then for an infinite length we realize that alpha 1 is 190 degree and alpha 2 is 0 degree that fi which, which finally makes the derivation h is equal to i by 2 pi rho into a5 which is the magnetic field intensity so this is the magnetic field intensity.